Now the interesting thing is when we come to the reaction with HNO3. What happens in case of HNO3 is that if you have suppose calcium and you make it react with HNO3. Your expected product would be CNO3 whole twice plus H2. But this in reality does not occur. Why? Because HNO3 is a very very strong oxidizing agent. What it does is that it oxidizes this H2 to H2O and it itself gets reduced to oxides of nitrogen like N2O, NO2 and etc. So this reaction does not work with HNO3 because HNO3 will just oxidize this H2 to H2O. So H2O will not, uh, H2 will not be released. So you would not get any bubble when you pass the tube inside the water. So there is no gas. So you will not find any bubble. So be careful when you get a question with HNO3. And if you say, if it says that you pass this gas, then what will happen? So, you will say that it does not form bubbles because there is no gas which is formed in this reaction. But there, there is gas like N2O or NO2, but like uh, there is no hydrogen formed in this reaction. So, bringing any matchstick near to this gas will not result in anything or it will not explode. And you have to write the equation. Now, in this case, you don't need the equation as such because the reducing and oxidizing equation, you will not need it. So, in this case, you can escape the equation. But in every other case where there is an equation required, you have to write the equation. So, this HNO3, it will not produce H2. But there are two metals, magnesium and manganese, which will react with this HNO3 to produce H2. These two are exceptions. They will react with the HNO3 to form your H2. They will not get they will not let the hydrogen get oxidized to water. So, remember these two exceptions and if they are asked, then just write them. That magnesium and manganese do not um, follow the same trend as the other uh, metals. They will not let the hydrogen get oxidized to H. Uh, H2O. They let the hydrogen evolve. So, if you are given the same problem of the bubble, but if you are given that magnesium or manganese is placed, then you will have the same old thing that when you bring that matchstick, it will explode and it will, the gas will start burning. Because in this case, hydrogen will be produced. Uh, next, we come to very, very useful topic, which is reactivity series. Before going into reactivity series, suppose we have a test tube. 
filled with copper sulfate and we dip an iron needle into it and we leave it for 10 minutes so what do you expect to happen this the result will be that the iron rod will get coated the iron nail will get coated by a reddish brown coating and the solution you know copper sulfate is blue in color dark blue in color so the solution will change from blue to pale green a bluish green sort of color what can you say has taken place you have fe you have coso4 some reaction must have taken place between the two otherwise you will not observe these changes what is that reaction what this fe does is that it goes to this thing and just knocks out this copper it sits in place of copper copper and just separates this copper from sulfate so you have copper and that copper is the reddish brown coating which you observe on the nail and this ferrous sulfate is the pale green or bluish green solution which is formed so this fe has actually displaced copper from its salt and thus this reaction is known as displacement reaction or replacement reaction but if you do the reverse thing if you have ferrous sulfate and you put a copper rod in it you will see that nothing will happen cu plus feso4 will give no reaction why does this happen it happens because ferrous has more power than copper from displacing for displacing it from its salt solution in other words we can say that ferrous is more reactive than copper and thus we determine a series called that called as reactivity series 